and welcome to another Dawn and Julia Create. Where are we going to be doing mixed media with this? Sorry about the rustling. <laughs> so this is a craft kit that Dawn picked up from the works for £2. So yes, um, we are going to be using this. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to be using this with very limited supplies to try and make something beautiful. So let's do some mixed media on a budget. Well, the lovely Dawn actually bought this kit when she visited Inverness and came to the Crafternoon Tea. So, yeah, she grabbed a few crafty bargains during that visit. So if we take a look inside the kit, she got all of this. This was £2, as we said earlier. We have the um, embroidery hoop, a glue stick, which is very useful if you've got a glue gun. If not, I'm not sure how you'd get on. Um, we have the leaves in two different colours. Then we have all of these um, roses when you kind of twirl them up. They were a little bit stuck together. They did sort of need prized apart a little bit. Um, then we had roses in the different colours. We've got some other petals that are slightly different shape and I think they're meant to make carnations and then those last ones are meant to make daisies. And of course we do have a list of instructions which I promptly threw away to do my own thing. So once I'd separated all the pieces, I then got to making some of them up into flowers. It's a really easy process. You basically just sort of twirl it round and round, and then once you get to the centre, you glue the base down onto the last petal, and then that forms your rose. So I did those. I was obviously waiting for my heat gun to uh, heat up a little bit there. It got better as it got going. And then just sort of shaped them out and repeated the process for all of the different flowers. Once I had my flowers, um, I then went on and decided to experiment with the leaves a little bit. Um, sometimes you can sort of manipulate fabrics and things and they respond to heat. So I wanted to see if that would happen. And I was managing to um, get a little bit of shape to the leaves just by twisting them around a paintbrush and applying a bit of heat. It also sort of burnt through them a little bit, which gave them a great texture. I did have to be a little bit careful because they were a little bit burning on my fingers, but I did like the effect that we have got with them. So I decided to try and use things a little bit differently. So one of these flower things I've just like wrapped round the ring um, just to give it a slightly different look and I'm going to make the roses the main feature. So using this little bit of felt, I'm just taking the corner, I don't want you to be able to see any of this but you just need a base to actually stick the roses on. So I'm just popping that down into the corner and then adding these um, roses. A glue gun was really really handy with this. You could also, if you wanted, to use um, gel medium. Gel medium does have an element of flex so um, that can be useful too. But to be honest, all of these products that we're going into this make are quite light. They're not overly heavy and so you probably find the glue gun will suffice absolutely fine. So I just keep sort of adding different leaves, looking for places that I can ground them and give them something to stick to. And just to be honest, I wasn't overthinking this. I wasn't I didn't really have a plan. I just put the roses down and started building up the leaves and just thought I'll just see what happens. Um I was um Whereas normally like when I'm creating a journal page or something, I'll lay all my images down, I'll put it all down, I'll see what it looks like and when I get the arrangement that I like, then I sort of um, stick it down permanently. I don't think you have the same sort of option with this because it would have all started falling off, so I just had to commit. I also wanted to just create something slightly different. Um, I said I wanted to do my own thing and for it not to just turn out like the packaging suggests. So I've used this rose just around the edge to give it a bit of a scalloped um, edge, just as an extra detail. It worked fine going round the one way because it followed the circle, but the opposite way was a little bit difficult because obviously the curvature was the wrong way round. So I just kind of kept snipping it into individual pieces and then gluing those pieces down. And that's what you can see me doing there. I just kind of keep flipping it round to see that it works. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit different. So here I've got a bit of a gap that I'm just going to fill with one of the centre pieces. Again, just trying my best to make this as sturdy as possible. Um, and when you see me put the heat gun there, that is just to get rid of any glue strings that were left over. Now this was me trying to add dewdrops and extra texture. Clearly I do not yet have the skills of using glue gun <laughs> for embellishments. Um, it didn't go overly well for me, but we got there and it added a few little extra drops and things um, just for a little bit of a little a bit of extra interest. 
I see sort of really having to wiggle and sometimes I'm poking it with the scissors to get it right as well but yeah we got there it looks all right in the finished thing I have to say when we get there you'll see that <laughs> Okay, so I would be using some spray gesso. I love that. It, you do need to use it in a well ventilated area, hence I'm out in the garden. Um, so my studio's in the garden, so it's quite handy. And I'm just giving this a little bit of a spray. I opted for the spray because I thought it would take me less time. And also sometimes it's really hard to get into the nooks and crannies when you're using a brush, whereas the spray makes that much easier. Um, I've actually bought the spray for doing another project. Um, I'm wanting to alter one of my daughter's um, toys. You might have seen that in the poll in my community tab. Um, so I've bought it for that, but it came in handy for this project as well. And you know, even though I did this out in the garden, when I brought it back into the studio, it still stank the studio out, I'm not gonna lie. The original plan was to put another layer of gesso on and completely wipe this out and paint everything myself but to be honest once the first layer of gesso had gone down I really like the soft pastel colours that I was left with everything sort of tied together a lot better and looked quite pretty so I decided I'm actually just going to stick with the colouration that is all ready there I'm going to stick with those soft pastel colours I think it looks great and we were allowed to use any colouring medium that we wished so I have pulled out some gold acrylic paint and I just painted the hoop gold. I'm getting a few fingerprints on there, but I will go back and rectify that in a minute. And then just dry brushing all over just to give everything a gold edge um, and just to yeah bring it to life a little bit, make it feel a little bit more luxurious. So you're trying to get in the petals and, and the other thing is because it was felt that had been covered in gesso not only did we get the edges of the flowers but we also got texture from the actual um, the feel of the felt now for some bizarre reason once I pulled the sentiment out I changed the orientation um, but I do like the way it has turned out I'm using one of Dawn's sentiments I love her sentiments and now she has foil ones I know they are just a lush so I put them in now this is going to warrant a trip to the naughty step. I am very sorry, Dawn. I'm going to justify it by saying I didn't use my black pen and I only used one colour of acrylic. I could have used loads. Um, yeah, but it just felt that this needed a little bit of added sparkle. So I'm going to find out whether or not I will be on the naughty step. I'm also really intrigued to see what Dawn has done. I reckon she's also going to have included some of her packaging on her finished make as well. I bet some of the acetate and the cardboard's on there as well. Dawn uses every little bit and it's really amazing that the direction she can take these kits in. She's really, really imaginative. So do pop over and check out what the lovely Dawn has done. And this is my um, project all finished all full of that extra naughty sparkle but do you know what even if i end up on the naughty step i am happy with that if you enjoyed watching this you might enjoy checking out some of my other mixed media videos and i will see you again very soon